What's something that only losers brag about? People who don't like them. Extra points if they actually call them haters. Lots of people were the smartest kid in their high school, man. And most claiming to be the smartest in their high school were not actually the smartest. Nothing more humbling than when you are a bit above average intelligence, and you meet someone that is really smart that has worked hard to cultivate it. I think the truly humbling experience is when you meet the person light years ahead who is barely trying. My brother's fiancé is like this. All my siblings and I are decently intelligent, able to understand and work through nearly anything academic given enough time. His fiancé can read something once and have it pop up on a final four months later and apply it accurately no problem. She remembers different conversation topics we the family have had years later and will even compliment people on their growth since then. That woman is goddamn sharp. And we were considered brainiacs by most of our friends' families and neighbors. How many, important, people they claim to know in order to impress others? I've been in the same room as hundreds of professional athletes, musicians, and politicians over the years. Technically a stadium is just a big room, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just like that time I went to a Yankees game with Jack Nicholson. Dave was always bragging about all the people he knows to his co-workers until one day his boss loses it and tells him to prove it. If he really knows all these famous people he could produce evidence, right? Dave shows his boss the numerous pictures on his phone hobnobbing with celebrities and politicians. His boss calls bullshit. Anyone can use Photoshop. Dave calls someone on his phone and hands it to his boss who hears the unmistakable voice of Morgan Freeman asking how long has it been since he and Dave had dinner together. Again, his boss doesn't believe him and says it could be anyone on the line. Dave thinks for a moment and asks if he has any plans that weekend. Dave then flies his boss and himself out to Vatican City where a crowd is gathering in front of the Vatican. Dave's boss is jostled around the crowd and loses Dave in the confusion. Suddenly, the crowd roars and he looks up to see the Pope himself standing next to a waving Dave. Just then, an old man gets his attention and motions towards the balcony saying, Who the fuck is that guy up there standing next to Dave? How mean they were to someone. They always tell a long rambling story about how dumb someone was and how they told them off. I once went on a first date with somebody who told me a story about how they yelled at a developmentally disabled guy in his self-help group that morning. He was trying to impress me. There was no second date. And he was confused about it. This was my ex-boyfriend. Whenever something went the slightest bit wrong, he would go on the war path to make himself the biggest pain in the ass possible until it got fixed. One time our bedroom fan broke. It was a box fan he'd bought at Home Depot like six years before. He went to HD and screamed at customer service until they gave him a new one. Despite having gotten six years of almost constant use out of it, he kept it on 24-7 for the white noise and circulation. Then he called everyone he knew and spent hours bragging about how he showed those cheap bastards at Home Depot. Completely toxic. How much they can drink. My brother would do this in high school, and fast forward 25 years later, he'd still do it when sitting with extended family on Thanksgiving. Most holidays would end with him passing out on the couch, or him pissing his pants around 6 p.m. I can drink several liters of water in one day. My pee is completely devoid of color. I once went on a date with a guy I met on OkCupid who told me probably how many other dates he had lined up that week. Just why? Was it some weird-ass attempt to look desirable? Had he somehow forgotten that I was already on a date with him? There wasn't a second date, which his busy schedule was probably extremely thankful for. It's 100% trying to look desirable and create urgency. He was hoping you would hear that and think that you better get to him now before the crowd does. Same deal as commercials that say, Supplies are going fast, or This deal won't last long. And just like in that kind of commercial, the deal is never as good as they're trying to make it look. It's not so much what they brag about as it is how often. My ex bragged about his achievements when he was in his 20s. All the freaking time. He is 60. All it does is continually prove that he has done absolutely nothing for 40 years. Big L. Honestly, not doing anything for 40 years is probably more of a braggable achievement. How great they were at high school sports long after graduating. 
Back in 82, I used to throw a pigskin a quarter mile. My old roommate bragged about holding a gun to two different ex-girlfriends' heads. So of that I guess. It honestly terrified me when he told me because he's a 32-year-old man and I'm a 21-year-old female. Being an alpha. We had a housewarming party years ago. A family friend was there and was telling me how to grill the burgers. He kept on and on and finally just kind of grabbed the spatula when I set it down and took over, saying, It's just that alpha dog mentality. Cool story, but now you're just my personal chef. So, I got to enjoy playing games and hanging out while my personal chef sweated over a grill in the Texas summer. Insisting on how, real, or brutally honest, they are. That's really just a positive spin on. I don't consider other people before I say things, or indeed ever. Every time I've heard someone say they're brutally honest, it's been a euphemism for speaking tactlessly, thoughtlessly, and impulsively. Knowing when to shut your goddamn pie hole is one of the most underrated skills a person can have. One of my favorite quotes that I try to live by is, Tact is the ability to tell someone to go to hell in such a way that they look forward to the trip. I believe Winston Churchill said it. You can still be honest and forthright without being rude and obnoxious. Usually you'll get a better result for it too. It's insane to me. I have Asperger's, so speaking truthfully and brutally just happens with me. And I've literally spent my entire life trying to censor myself and know what's appropriate and what's not. I feel horrible whenever my honesty ends up hurting someone who didn't deserve it. I get social anxiety just because I never know how truthful to be. The idea that people can control it but don't is like learning some people shit themselves voluntarily just to make others smell it. This is just who I am, and I don't need to apologize for it. Sorry not sorry. Only God can judge me. If you can't handle me at my worst, blah blah blah. They always have the most cliché justifications and dismissals for being a-holes. Going to jail. Unless you were a political prisoner fighting for freedom in a totalitarian state. Or were a major icon of the civil rights movement and was being imprisoned for a minor traffic offense and also supporting the heliocentric model of the solar system. Treating people like shit who doesn't deserve it. Chris Rock. I take care of my kids. You are supposed to you dumbass. Low expectation motherfucker. What you want a cookie? Basically what I was going to post. People who genuinely brag about doing basic things that are expected of you. I pay my taxes. As a certified loser I must admit that I brag about my ability to type ASCII faces. In my experience, there are only really two types of people who brag about their clothing. The people who brag about how expensive an item was. Or the people who brag about how cheap the item was. I wouldn't go so far as to call the first group losers but the latter group tend to be much more fun to hang around with. Third type, girl who has a dress with pockets. My wife's wedding dress has pockets. Years later, and she still mentions it. She's earned the credit. Until she meets someone else that did the same, she's got the social dominance. Not reading books. Have to admit, when I was a teenager, 12 to 18, I had little interest in reading books other than when needed to study. But damn, since I started reading books I found out that it's really addicting at times. I mean I can understand the angst that comes from required reading. The biggest bibliophile I know was a terrible English student. But I've encountered plenty of adults who are proud of the fact that they haven't opened a book since the end of high school college. How much they haven't slept. Like cool bro. You're an adult. Go to bed earlier you doofus. As someone who struggles with insomnia... I don't understand how this is something to be proud of. I hate the days when I get little to no sleep. Seriously, I don't brag about this. I complain about it. What's worse is that it turns into this game of one-upping, where people try to outdo each other over damaging their bodies and brains. They're like the people who brag about how they never take vacations, sick days, or days off in general. I don't see what's so admirable about being busy and stressed all of the time. I could totally kick that guy's ass. Bro, I'm so wasted. How drunk someone is, as you get older it sounds even stupider. Getting into fights. Parking violations, maggots on their sleeves, shaving with mace in the dark, saving food stamps, 
burning down the trailer park. How little they study in school. The girls in my class used to say things like, OMG I never study, OMG I'm gonna fail so hard, OMG I only got a B I'm so bad, so on, and then proceed to get an A, really sucked when I only got like A E after hearing that. BTW I live in Sweden so an E is acceptable but you can do better. How many girls they've been with? People who brag about not bragging. What's something that only losers brag about? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.